Hey guys, so in our last video, we talked about using this sort of pose mannequin form, this sort of elevated stick figure to start constructing various characters, whether you want to draw really chibi and cute characters or more rendered out and detailed characters. Today, we're going to take that another step further. We're going to talk about volumetric construction, and we're going to talk about how to apply these principles to your own drawing and your own art style. So just a quick refresher, we developed our basic skeleton for humans off of the actual basic human skeleton. I walked you guys through that, but this isn't all you need to know to be able to draw people and to be able to draw figures. In my From Stick to Figure drawing classes, we talk about this in a lot more detail, and all of these templates and resources are available to my wonderful art nerds over on Patreon. You guys can join the art nerd community at patreon.com slash natosoup, and you can print these out and follow them along as well. But we have loads of important drawing information. This packet is actually for the kids in my comic drawing class with the little art house. So what we're doing today is we're taking this stick figure form here. We're going to develop it into a form like this. And these forms work well for whether you're drawing more realistic proportion people or super chibi people or anything in between. It's really up to you. And it really kind of just varies on how you want to show details and what details you want to show. So that's kind of where your own personal style and your own personal taste are going to come in. And the stick figure form that we talked about in the last video works well even for little chibi figures like this one. So what we're going to be focusing on today is using 3D volumetric drawing, which we've talked about in a lot of other videos, how we're going to use that with our stick figure that we've constructed to create a figure. And then I'm going to show you guys how to take that figure or how to use one of my templates and draw people, draw your own characters. So in our last tutorial, we talked a lot about using sort of a rectangular figure to construct the torso. You can also use a flower sack, which is gonna give you kind of a cuter, more rounded look, or even a jelly bean shape, or as we call it in my drawing class, a lumpy potato. And this works really well when you're constructing animals. So here we just have a simple demonstration showing the three different types. This is the rectangular type, this is the flower sack type, and then this is the jelly bean type. And we're still gonna use volumetric perspective, I'm sorry, volumetric drawing for all three to flesh out the limbs. But as you can see, as we kind of draw through the character, how we draw these things really changes the look and how the perceived age of the character that we're drawing. So I wanna start with um, just something kind of basic. So we have here a Yotsuba Kawaii figurine or kawaii figurine and I picked her because she's got some very very simple shapes going on and when I teach volumetric drawing when I sh teach volumetric constructive human anatomy people struggle with the cylinders of the arms and legs the most and what I see people do is I see them draw a ball two sticks and then another ball. And a lot of this comes from those how to draw manga books and how they show you how to draw figures. Um, what you really want to aim for is cylinders that actually look like cylinders in perspective. So I have here a handy little container of Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White, and this is a cylinder. So when we look at it straight on like this, we cannot see the top, we cannot see the bottom, it just looks like a rectangle. But as we tilt it towards us, as it comes towards us in space, we start to see the top of the cylinder. And although we cannot see the bottom of the cylinder, we do know it's there. Then we turn it more in space. We see even more of the top of the cylinder and even less of the bottom of the cylinder. And then let's say we see it from this view. So we see now the top has become the bottom. Oh, but it's pointing towards us. So actually, it needs to be drawn larger and this needs to be drawn smaller because it's receding away from us into space. Okay. 
And here we can see almost all top and basically very little of the sides or the bottom. So as Yotsuba will show us, these skinny little arms and legs, these are all cylinders. So just like with this, as it moves towards us in space, we're gonna get a different view than as it moves away from us in space. So the circles and the two lines and the other circle thing, I get where you guys are coming from. I get how you see it. And I really strongly recommend you practice drawing volumetrically, wow, volumetrically, and looking at things, maybe dolls, maybe figurines, maybe other people, and practice drawing those things. And that's gonna really help you kind of understand the concepts a bit better. I find having physical manipulatives, physical things that you can hold and rotate in your hands can help with that a lot. So let's start by drawing little Yotsuba here. So I'm going to try to keep the view I have similar to the view that you guys have. So we're going to start with a line of action. We're going to use a rectangle to block in her torso. I know that she would have a rib cage and a pelvis. Then we have two somewhat long stick-like legs. And we're going to draw two little rectangles for the feet. We're going to draw the hole where the neck connects to the head. Her shoulders are down, so I'm going to invert the bow that connects kind of our collarbone to our arms. I'm going to draw the sticks for her arms and then the little mittens for her hands, a stick for her neck, and then a circle for her head. All right, pretty simple, just like what we talked about in the last tutorial. Now we're gonna use cylinders to kind of help us flesh out what's going on. So in a lot of my videos, you guys will see me just draw a line like this when we're drawing the cylinders. I want you guys to draw them all the way through though. The more you practice it, the easier it's going to get. And then her legs are really, really thin. And then we're still going to keep the little triangular feet. And I drew her arms a little bit too thick. That's okay. And then her head. Her head is a sphere, so like a ball. And then it comes down just a little bit longer into like the bottom jaw of her face. And then She's got her hands and fists, so we're gonna basically leave it like that. All right, so now we have kind of a more constructed version of the character. Let's finish drawing her in another color. Okay, so I'm going to use a crosshair to kind of help me place the, high, the eyes and the nose and the mouth. So what we're doing is we're subdividing the face horizontally, that's across this way, and then vertically, that's up and down. And people always ask why I draw the magical third eye. And that actually allows me to place her eyes because even with anime, characters' eyes are either one eye width apart or even larger, even further apart, depending on the style. And if you guys haven't read Yotsuba And yet, it is a really, really cute comic I think you guys will enjoy little C shapes for the ears. And we don't even have a nose on this figurine. So we're just gonna draw her big happy mouth. And the way we subdivided or um, 
kind of cut the face in half is really useful because her hair is symmetrical. So she has four bangs on each side and then four little ponytails or little pigtails on each side. And this method works for any kind of people or drawing characters. It isn't an anime specific sort of thing. That just happens to be what I like and what I have nice examples of that I can show you guys. But you can practice this with any figurines you want to practice with it. Shoot, this would even work with like Gundam or Transformer figurines. It doesn't have to be 100% humanoid. As I've told you guys in other videos, pretty much anything in the world can be broken down into basic 3D shapes. So we're just kind of roughly sketching in her hair. And Yotsuba is a reference to a four leaf clover and a name. And that's kind of reflected in her hair and her kind of lucky personality. Okay, so this figurine is designed to be posable, right? So it's not really designed to be 100% realistic. So how we draw her is gonna differ a little bit from how we would draw this Figma pose figurine or how we would draw people in real life. So like you can see, she has basically no shoulders. It's all just this triangular neck area. which is exacerbated because she's got dolman sleeves, so like a baseball t-shirt. And then for her, so that she's posable, she has these little ball joints that I know I just told you guys I hate those and I don't want y'all drawing them. But in this instance, she does have them. However, they don't rotate all the way around like a ball would. They pretty much just bend. So even that, this was a concession to manufacturing rather than, you know, a realistic depiction of the character. and see her knees. Now normally when I draw knees, I draw kind of the a rounded shape that goes over the patella, which is your knee bone, like your, yeah, literally like your knee bone. But she doesn't even have those because her knees only bend in one direction. And even on her shorts, you can see they're slightly upturned. So I wouldn't recommend drawing figurines from reference all the time. Like I definitely recommend using like Senshi Stock or some of the other great pose reference sites out there to practice drawing real people. But this is kind of good for understanding just the basics. And I feel like once you understand the basics, you can kind of find other resources to help you understand more complicated issues. Okay, so the reason we picked Yotsuba though is because her limbs are very clearly cylindrical. You can really see that she has cylinders for her arms and her legs. You can also see where the joints are. She's a pretty simplified version of what is often kind of a complicated or seemingly complicated system. So I'm sure YouTube is going to flag this, but this is a drawing reference. This is one of the Figma pose dolls. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw her next to Yosuba. So you got, wow, let me remove the, uh, there we go. That'll make it a little bit easier to see what's going on. I'm gonna draw her next to Yotsuba so you guys can kind of compare the two. So I'm gonna start, so she's got this tiny little head and this really long body. I'm not even gonna try to draw that accurately. We're just gonna wing it, which is not necessarily the most recommended thing. So she's got this really long rectangle for her torso. And I wish they made a gender neutral 
pose one of these because I have the male and I have the female but you know not everybody's built like this and certainly not everybody's built like the male one and the muscles and the breasts kind of get in the way when you're posing them so got the rib cage and then way down here we have the pelvic box she's also got kind of big shoulders And then her arms don't even come down as long as they really should. Or maybe I just have monkey arms. And then she's got these really long legs. <clears throat> and she's got these little bitty triangular feet. So she... <laughs> She looks a little bit like Slenderman, doesn't she? Especially compared to Yotsuba. And even Yotsuba has kind of a, a small head. She has this really long neck. And then she's got this tiny little comically small head. And then we'll draw our oval shapes for her hands. And we drew our triangles for her feet. We'll switch over now to our blue pencil and start kind of figuring out what's going on using cylinders. So when I'm drawing, when I'm drawing figures, I pretty much always taper the cylinders on the arms and legs. So they aren't just straight up and down cylinders. But when you're practicing, I want you guys to really focus on understanding the cylinder part of the arms and legs. And I mean, she's really rather busty which is another reason I wish they'd make a gender neutral one and maybe they do and maybe I've just missed that so you can see I'm drawing through the cylinders and really our forearms aren't really really cylindrical we have these two bones that kind of crisscross when they from the elbow and to the wrist but even these kind of pose figures don't really capture that, which is another reason I really recommend you practice drawing from reference. That's her rib cage. And then down here are her hips. So even having a pose figure like this doesn't take away your need to kind of understand how the human form is constructed and to be able to recreate them. Also, you get thigh gap, which not everybody has that, hey. It's okay if you do, and it's okay if you don't. When I was a younger, artist I was very 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 thin because the medication I was on kept me from gaining weight and I felt really self-conscious about how thin I was and now I am much less thin so whatever body you have is a good body and unfortunately it can be hard to find good reference of people for all body types so the way this model is made is she's meant to have more points of articulation more bendy bendability than the Yotsuba figure. So I'm going to try to recreate that for you guys. And then we can't really see her knees because of the way that connects into them. And you guys can see how when we start laying on fat and muscle, it kind of changes the shape of our cylinders a little bit. And then her joints, you can see they're hidden a little bit better. You can only see the ball point on the inside of the joints. Again, we don't have a ball here, you know, and we don't have a ball here either. Okay. 
And then she has this tiny little head. So you can see this Figma figurine, this Figma pose figurine, compared to the Yotsuba figurine, they're almost the same height, but their proportion, yeah, they really are almost the same height, but their proportions are very, very different. So on that note, in our last tutorial video, I talked about showing you guys how to draw the two very differently proportioned Sakura figurines. So we're going to do that before we say goodbye. Okay, so let's start with our very tiny, very chibi Nendo Sakura, since I know a lot of you guys like really, really cute stuff. And in our last video, we talked about how she's only two heads tall. Well, it's like two and then a fourth head tall. And this is going to be our baseline. I also want to compare her to our other Sakura figure. She's like a half head taller than her. And we determined that this Sakura is about six heads tall. So we're going to start from the bottom. Haha, -ha, just enough room. Perfect. So we've got our two baselines started. So in the last tutorial, we talked about how she's got this rectangular torso, but it actually is much longer than it is on the more, and I, let me see if I can pose her in a more dignified way. There we go, okay, that's better. And then her little arms and her little legs. And then that's her head. Okay, so let's do the skeleton for our more realistic Sakura. So that's her head. And then she's got a long torso that comes down to about half of the head height down here. And it's actually a very thin torso. And then she's got these long legs and the same little triangular feet. Actually, I think her hips probably flare out a little bit just for like the sake of being able to pose the figurine because if they're too close, you're not going to be able to pose the figurine very well. And then her arms come down about here. Okay, so we've got our skeletal figures for both of them. Let's start rendering things out. So for a figure as tiny as her, and she doesn't have any joints, you can't really pose her. So we can just do our cylinders without any breaks for the elbows or for the knees, and they taper, they get smaller as they go in to the hands. And the same is going to go for the legs. And then she has just like the tiniest triangles for her feet. And her hands are comparatively really, really small, especially when you think about how, how large her head is. And I think either earlier in this video or in our last video, we talked about how the hand is about half the width of your face. So when you think about that, her hands are really, really small because her it's not even enough to cover an eye. But it's so cute. And then most of her head is going to be our sphere with just a little bit coming down into kind of a point. And then her neck is kind of like a little tuna can. And then we place the third eye as well as her actual eyes on either side. She's got like a little boop boop nose and then a little boop boop mouth. 
we can't even really see her ears on this one but they're small and they're kind of low on the head so then we have our more realistic sakura she has a much longer neck and her head is surprisingly tiny and it's actually very similar in dimensions in terms of like how the head itself is constructed to the nendo and clamp actually spaces their eyes wider than an eye width apart especially on card captor sakura and I mean any character in that world, not just Sakura herself. So for this figurine, you can actually see her shoulders for this are really wide. And then she also has these little puff sleeves. Especially they're really wide when you look at like how tiny she herself is. So this would give her a really, really small rib cage. And then her hands are slightly larger in comparison to her face than the Nendo version, her Nendo sister. And Nendo is just short for Nendoroid. That's a particular manufacturer of a very certain type of figurine. Then we have these crazy long leggies and they're actually very thin. And that is a stylistic choice. And they don't taper as much as like the Figma thighs taper. The Figma thighs taper a lot compared to Sakura's thighs. And then we can still use the triangle shapes for her feet. They're just a little bit bigger. All right, so we're gonna switch over to a black color pencil and start sketching in a few of the details. All right, so starting with our Nendo Sakura. And I'm not aiming for perfect accuracy. I'm just kind of demonstrating. So her the skirt part on her dress is kind of conical in shape, but it flares out a lot at the bottom. actually drew the ruffles going the wrong way. And it tapers up into kind of the top and bow area. And then she's got these puff sleeves and you could start them as spheres. And then she has just like the tiniest little boop boop feet. You can barely see them. They're like little discs. Okay, so moving up to her head. I'm just gonna sketch in her face quickly because I really wanna focus more on her hair and her hat. Especially because um, between this figure and this figure, the faces don't differ all that much. They're pretty on model. So when I draw hair, and I've talked about this before, I treat it as like main masses. And I think this is really noticeable when we're drawing like little figurines. Does her hat come off? Her hat does come off. I forgot. It's been so long. 
So you can kind of see we have like the front mass and then we have the back mass. Oh, it's magneted on. That's so smart. I was wondering how they kept that on. So we have the bangs and then we have like these very clamp sort of overlapping bangs. So these can be treated just as like kind of a mass unto themselves in the front bangs. And then she's got like those little side things like her little sideburns. And then she has her little antenna. So I would recommend in general roughing in the major masses of the hair first and then adding details. And then her hat with the giant bow. And the hair between the two figurines is also pretty similar. And you can't even see the ears in this view. Okay, so that's a sketch of the Sakura Nindoroid. Let's move over to the Sakura Figma. So her skirt is way huge and way more detailed but it's still kind of conical in form. So this one's way more like a tutu and this is just like a cute skirt, right? So with this, we actually have some depth to the layers of ruffles. And then you can see the ruffles follow the folds in the dress, which then kind of connect up into the waistband. And drawing clothing, volumetric drawing applies to that too. And then this, so it, it follows it in a major way and then it's got like mini ruffles. And just like waves, they become kind of less intense as they move away from the original connection point. And then in this one, you can actually see She's wearing tall socks, above the knee socks. You can also see that the bows on her shoes are fairly large and that she's wearing cute rounded Mary Jane shoes. So between this figure and this figure, they, what they've shifted a lot of is the details and how much detail they go into things and then how the proportions are drawn. So generally, if you want to draw something that's very like cute and simplified, you want to simplify. And if you want to draw something that's kind of prettier, you might add more details. But that's really where style and your personal taste kind of come into play. Some chibi characters have a lot of detail on like the face and then the clothes are very simplified. And then we can also see... She's got kind of a ruffled neckline on her dress. And the big puff sleeves have a little ruffle coming down from there. And they also have little bows. And I'm not really going to draw her face. Well, sure, I'll draw her face. So what I'm going to do, we've already kind of sketched it in the major facial landmarks. We're going to go back in and sketch in kind of the major forms of the hair. Does her hat come off? No. And it seems like her hair is much more fluffy, more shoujo aesthetic, more pretty than the little Nendo. She's more designed to be cute and this one's designed to be more pretty. but we still have that weird sticky outy overlapping major bang. And then underneath it, a minor bang, we still have the little antenna. We have her sideburns and now we have these little dangly bits. And the smile and the eyes are pretty much the same regardless of the figure and her hat is somehow even bigger on her head 
and this is shaped kind of like a cushion. So Sakura is wearing a cushion to go out and capture the cloud cards. Ooh, going off the paper there, and then her bow sticks out even more. So, same character, two very different ways to think about breaking down the figure, two very different ways to handle the proportions, and two very different ways to add details to the same character. Alright guys, so today we kind of learned how to take a very basic pose mannequin based on the human skeleton and develop it more into, well I'm not going to say a human figure, but we've definitely figured out how to do this for anime figures. So I have a lot of videos here on this channel where I show you how to do constructive human anatomy. Today I wanted to focus more on how to use this to draw in your own art style or how to draw in various other art styles. What's really cool about constructive human anatomy is this can apply to any art style you want to draw in. Even cubism is kind of based on taking volumetric forms and figuring out how to reduce the body into those very basic angular forms. So any art style you can imagine can probably been broken down with constructive human anatomy. Hopefully I explain this in a way that's easier to understand than some of my other videos. I'm going to link those other tutorials down in the description below in case you guys are looking to learn even more about drawing or you're looking for more help with your drawing and your comics. I've got a lot of great playlists here on this channel that'll help you guys out with that. This video was recorded to help me prepare for the anatomy part of my drawing comics class taught with the little art house. So hopefully I've learned some things while showing you guys some things and hopefully you guys enjoyed seeing a small part of my figure collection. If you guys like what I do and you want to help me do it, you can join me over on Patreon at patreon.com slash natosoup. Your monthly pledges go towards helping me make videos like this one here and helping me dedicate the time necessary to doing it. I really appreciate you guys hanging out with me today and I look forward to seeing you guys with another tutorial in the near future. Speaking of, if you're looking for more drawing tutorials, I have a playlist that's going to be linked down in the description below. My favorite tutorials or my favorite drawing tutorials that you guys should check out. It's got a lot of great stuff in it. And if you're looking for a place to share your art, get feedback and encouragement, you guys can join me on Discord at The Paint Box. Links for all of those things are going to be in the description below. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you guys again really soon. Have a wonderful day guys. Bye!